What up folks, we back with the hottest indie titles to grace us this March. But first, let's hit the news desk. The definitive edition of Ori and the Blind Forest has been released for Xbox One, but the PC version has been delayed to an unspecified date. The definitive edition comes packed with new areas, new abilities, new story sequences and different modes of difficulty. For those who already own Ori, the definitive edition can be bought as a $5 upgrade. One of our 50 best upcoming indies of 2016, Thumper, will now launch on PlayStation VR as well as PS4 and PC. Battle Chasers Night War has secured additional funding from Nordic Games, allowing the game to reach some of its stretch goals it missed whilst on Kickstarter. Some of these elusive goals include a new area, more 2D animation and voice acting. Ultimate Chicken Horse is competitive Super Mario Maker. Block Hood is a compact urban neighborhood simulator. Tie the Tasmanian Tiger is being revived on Steam Early Access. Sheltered is challenging survival management post-apocalypse. Out of Brazil, Alendo de Heroi is a classic platformer sung completely in Portuguese. And lastly, Gremlins Inc. combines greedy unilateral gremlins with strategy and board games. A drift is a breathtaking and lonely experience in space hindered by some rude interruptions. The game is a walking simulator, or in this case, more of a floating in space simulator. It's kind of like playing Gravity or The Martian instead of watching them. That's pretty cool. The visuals are amazing, constantly stimulating your experience and adding an incredible level of reality. We can only assume this would be amplified in the VR version. The narrative does well to support the spectacle. From the very start you're in trouble. Your space station is destroyed, you have no memory of what transpired, and your oxygen levels are waning. The action only rises from there, making survival an engrossing and emotional task. It really all sounds great, but there are some misfires that draw you away from the amazingness. The compass and navigation are beyond annoying, the voice acting feels horribly fake. For any looking for gameplay depth and intriguing mechanics, there are none to find. A drift is 100% walking simulator. It certainly has its faults, but ultimately, a drift's strengths outshine them. Moon Hunter shows the potential of narrative in roguelikes, but could have stayed in early access a bit longer. After backing Moon Hunters on Kickstarter and following its journey, we really want to like it, but there's a few problems preventing that. The game is full of interesting characters, lore, and amazing abilities like talking to animals. But to really uncover that stuff, you need to invest time, and that becomes an arduous kind of task. Our biggest gripe in the beta was the combat. To be fair, it has been improved, but it still plays out like a mad scramble. The controls for attacks feel imprecise, and enemies glitch out. Balls in particular like to get stuck ramming against a wall. Personality traits feel arbitrarily tacked on as well, and it creates a disconnect between the character you're trying to create in your head and the one on the screen. We are focused on the negatives here with Moon Hunters, but that's because we had such high expectations for it. The game is still getting updated, and the PS4 release is in the works, so hopefully things can continue to improve. Out there somewhere is an affordable and clever little retro package. What makes this platformer come puzzle and nifty is its teleport gun, which allows you to shoot a bullet and then travel to where it goes. Much like the Doctor's sonic screwdriver, it's the tool for every job, whether that be zapping through a waterfall of lava or jumping a gap. Things get a lot more crazy and creative than that, but we'll leave them as surprises for you to uncover. The portal gun never overstays its welcome either. The short playtime of the game lets you see its every trick without seeing through its potential. The old school art and tunes combo is pleasant without being amazing, and there is a bit of story tacked on top too. In sum, Out There Somewhere is a fantastic short adventure with a red hot price tag. Risk of Rain creators deliver again with merciless assassination game Deadbolt. 
This time last year, a leaked demo showed Deadbolt had a promise, but the final product confirms it. Deadbolt plays a bit like Hotline Miami, but more like Not A Hero and even more like Gunpoint. Playing as the Grim Reaper, you must take out runes with clinical and precise stealth. There is no room for error and zero chance of escape. By turning into smoke, you can travel through vents, easily the coolest part of the game. As earlier alluded to, the game is unforgiving, something Risk of Rain fans should be familiar with. There's also just as much detail and pizzazz in the sprites and animations. Developer Hoopoo Games have a proven ability to take 2D art to a new level. Deadbolt is a chilling, challenging and overall cracking stealth game. It was almost three years ago in September 2013 that Hyperlight Drifter got funded, and now it's finally here. Well, at least for those of us on PC. The console releases will be coming later this year. The early verdict is that the wait was worthwhile. Its dungeons and upgrades are all very classic Zelda. The wordless story is powerful without being overbearing. The post-apocalyptic world is large, beautiful and full of curiosity. The game's heart is its combat. It's hard, some would even say it's unsympathetic with its lack of instruction, but it respects the player's intelligence and gives you its world and mysteries for all your private exploration and understanding. Fights demand your attention and have great rhythm. The character movement is super slick, and it always feels boss to be wielding a sword made of light. Hyped Hyperlight Drifter has been, but Deliver it also has. It's a special game. Well that's it folks, thanks for watching, my name's Lawrence, and my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former.